Hey guys, it's Ben, and welcome back to Hexen DD. In the last part, we cleared the secret stage, and we thus um, moved on to the third and final hub of any Hexen, any official Hexen game. This area is pretty annoying. Now, I've kind of played a bit of this, and I've also researched how to get up to the secret map. Okay, you see all this water? Enemies will actually dive into it and jump out of other ends. You can, still, you can tell by the kill counter uh, how no enemy is actually disappearing. I don't think... But you gotta be really careful when you walk over these things, because... In a failed recording... I should, I, how many times have I said not call them a failed recording? Um, I'm just gonna... That's what I mean! That is what I mean! You get telefragged! I mean, like, what?! Okay, first of all, I pulled a telefrag in the first hub, but, like, now suddenly the general enemies are doing telefrags. I mean, like, what?! What is this? And the worst part is, you can't even access these teleports yourself. So, whoa. So, yeah, so... Enemies are just able to teleport. Magic. I mean, like, this gets pretty annoying, actually. Like, you're just casually going around and suddenly an enemy just teleports into you. I mean, like, first of all, first of all, um... Is... Has any physicist actually proven that telefragging would exist? I was having a bit of a philosophical discussion with my mom just then. Um... Just kinda weird, you know? Um, I died. <laughs> Jeez, I've been spending a bit of time on here. Um, in this hub, just trying to get out the front door. Because there's tons of enemies in this front door area. It's just, you know, I can't seem to hit any of them because they keep disappearing and coming back and whatnot. Also the fact that yeah that happens, they just like pop up next to you, it's like, oh hello! I'm your best friend! It's me! I don't I don't know why they sound like that. Um Yeah the, the other problem is oh, I also don't have anything. But uh so yeah, um but I'm not gonna talk about the philosophical discussion, I'm gonna talk about this game. Uh but more specifically the physics involved with telefragging, okay? Now, what happens with teleporting? So, I'm assuming that matter displaces. Okay, this is kind of Vsauce stuff you're gonna be hearing. I don't, I don't know if he's actually talked about teleporting. Maybe I'll ask him about it. I'm recording this on December 10th, so if he says it between the time now and then, then that's just extreme coincidence, but... Um, I, I don't know if he's... I can't remember if he's done a video, but... I'm assuming that teleporting Matter display. I, I really want to take out these guys as well. Matter displaces itself, and then I don't know exactly how someone would, something would uninstate itself and then reinstate itself hmm. somewhere else. Now, first of all, that's gonna that'd be pretty tough because unless if, unless if you could send the particles at light speed, if you could do that, then sure, totally do that. Because then, you know, teleporting is easy. If it's actually, like, displacing particles and stuff, like, the particles would definitely be zooming off really quickly from where they were teleported, and then they would appear where they were te where, where, yeah, where the destination is. So the thing with teleportation is that, I guess, um... Gosh, they just jumped it. Whoa. Shot the other guy. Uh, so the thing with teleportation is that there is a lot of, um... Uh, well, well, well just, uh, I'll just explain what I mean by uh, what I was saying. Um, so basically, what I'm what I'm trying to say is that um, so when something teleports, it basically zooms away really quickly, which basically means that. it would create like a bit of a displacement where it was, where I'm assuming light would kind of bend a bit. So basically, there'd be a bit of a light ripple when someone teleports. I don't know how come 
See, oh gosh, these... These things just... I'm just trying to stand in a place and suddenly someone's hitting me because they just magically appear in front of me. You know what I, I, I mean by that? It's just like, what? Uh, I have to do know that there's like libraries off to the side of here. But, um, and then when he reappears, I guess there would be a light ripple because suddenly matter is having to undisplace itself. Not displace, it'll be like replace. I guess it would uh, be trying to replace itself in this location and hopefully if I can actually kill everyone here. So the thing is there's a lot of enemies just in that kind of area there. And then they're respawning them right here. So that is so annoying, that is so annoying. Okay, so I'm guessing I've got to make like a staircase there. Get telefragged, jeez. Um, I'm also guessing that I have to pick up artifacts in this stage. Uh, anyway, I'll check out these areas off to the sides because I know that they're here. I just kind of walking around. And I feel. Um, use these. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. So when someone teleports, that has to happen. Now, what happens if they're inside of something? I'm guessing that they will, they will be put into the location no matter what, which basically means that something has to force itself. Now, there's always the issue of teleportation. What if you end up inside of something? Well, it's basically going to be like being inside of air. You're going to be inside of air at the beginning of a teleport, uh, or at the end of a teleport, wouldn't you? It's just that the air would displace itself. Likewise, I think that if you teleport yourself inside of water, the water would displace itself. At least, hopefully. If it's displaced... See, the problem about if you go into water is that does... Does the air inside your body also teleport? In which case, it probably should. If you're going to be safe, make sure the air inside your body teleports, because... Say you teleport into water. Suddenly, anything that's air in your body <laughs> suddenly becomes replaced with water. That's not good. Now imagine if it's even worse. Say it's like a wall. Now with the water it would just kinda like it would it would probably like do a big dive bomb splash, you know? It would definitely try and expel itself from the place where someone teleported to. Um I don't know why I'm talking about teleportation in this, but hey, I'm trying to explain a telefrag. Uh and I guess this is how I end up getting to it. Um uh, now, if you're in, like, say, a concrete wall, and you teleport into it, I'm guessing that the material which you would be in would suddenly expel itself. Now, that would probably be able to break things. Like, like, say, someone, like, came into this column here. Suddenly, their matter would... Oh, gosh. Freaking teleporters. Um, their matter would suddenly have replaced... I don't know what these switches do, I'm just... And they do some fun stuff. Happy, happy fun. Ah. Make some stairs. Uh, I'm guessing that they would. Ooh. I haven't even explained this hub, by the way. Uh, the secret level actually requires a fair amount of setup. It's not just like magically pick it up at the end. Also, this is pretty cool. It's just like these side channels. Like, that is pretty cool. Also. Yeah. You gotta deal with those things again. Uh, and just before I end off, one of the maps in this hub is completely optional, and I think there are... Hold on. Okay, so there are seven maps in total. In the previous recording I said six, but there's seven maps in total. One of them is the secret map, one of them is this hub, one of them is a map after the whole thing. You know, a finale map. And one of them is a completely optional map. You can access it normally, but it's just completely optional, it doesn't require, it doesn't give you anything. It's like, uh, think about it in the first hub if, by the way, there's another library. Think about it in the first hub if that fifth gem, imagine if that was, like, if that had, like, a whole stage to itself. But you need to access that optional level in order to activate all the stuff for the secret level. Um, so anyway, yeah, so, yeah, if so, so that concrete would have to expel stuff. Now, granted, that would probably hurt, because one, there would be a lot of force to be in love, kinetic energy on your skin there. 
So I, I don't think it would be the most safest thing to teleport inside of something. Uh, bump, but I, like if you, as long as the air inside of your body teleports with you, then it wouldn't, like you know, kill you. At least hopefully not. The force may kill you maybe, but at least the general being in the wall isn't. It's not like you just teleport inside of the wall, suddenly your leg is stuck. Not specifically, it's more like it's more like concrete has to get out of the of the place where your leg was, so it would just kind of explode. Now, as a telefragging, that would kind of be a similar deal. The matter in which the person is teleporting to explodes. Which basically that's not good for That's not good for you because because you would basically explode now. You are just a person, so obviously you would be oh crap, the guy came up from behind. You were just a person, so obviously you would be a lot more weaker <laughs> than the than the concrete wall. Pretty sure concrete wall is tougher than man. Pretty sure. Don't be a telefragged. So yeah, uh, he's going hmm on a lot of things. I was thinking, oh, did I have to collect something? But I'm not entirely sure what those are. They look like symbols from that. That <laughs> it looks like that symbol really. Um, but it's not that. Um, so yeah, that, I guess that's how a telefrag works in my eyes. Um. You can ask me about time travel and all. Oh gosh, time travel. Time travel would take a little bit of time. Um, basically, I think time travel is not a split timeline thing. Uh, like, you know... I gotta go on, <laughs> on the other side. Uh, you know, like, Back to the Future? I don't think it kind of works like that, specifically. Oh, crap. <laughs> Touch the water. <gasps> um... I don't think it works precisely like Back to the Future, although Back to the Future kind of hinted on the method which I... I'm calling it a method, it's more so a theory, the theory that I think is probably right. Uh, basically, instead of, a, instead of a timeline theory, which a lot of people use, I kind of think more so about just a linear... I think it's the linear theory. If you don't know what that is, I think it's... um. See, it's weird, they just disappear. There's, there's barely any any animation for it, it's just they kind of appear and stuff, it's just like, ugh. Um, but basically what I mean is that like if it, an, an event would happen at a moment, like say, like of course there's a lot of problems with the linear theory, but hey, no one can time travel, we can't prove any of that. And it actually, like the split, the timeline theory makes sense except it makes no sense. Like, it gets rid of all the plot holes, but then again, makes no sense in the process. So, I'd prefer the one that has the holes. Yeah, I decided to use that. Um, so, basically, what the linear theory is, is that basically, at, at a single instance, everything happens, nothing changes. So, for example, so for example, I go back in time and give myself a high five. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, say for example... Me from the future comes and gives me a high five. Okay. And now I've got four portals, so I'm gonna have to go into one and we'll do a little bit of stuff while I explain the time travel. Holy step, we're in the optional map. Straight up. I'm guessing that would teleport us out. Again, there's just kind of rows of enemies here. It's so weird. Um. But, uh, yeah, so then I could say I'll go back in time and give myself a high five, and that would happen. No sweat. That's what I like about the linear theory. Oh, there's a guy in there. Does he detect, like, when you're looking at him? Because I'm thinking it may be based on that, actually. Uh, but, yeah. Why am I talking about time travel and stuff? It's kind of dark in here. Also, I don't know why they have to give you a shield there. There you go. Uh, but... It's linear theory. Basically, like, um... 
I'm gonna have to drop down there eventually. I can't take him out any other way. Um, yeah, with the linear theory, like, of course, there's a plot hole where it's oh, there's a there's a fault with it, like uh, paradoxes and stuff. Like, for example, say, say, me from the future comes to me and gives me a painting, okay? Then later in life, I will go back in time and give my previous self that painting. Nothing happened to the painting, and thus, like, what? Where did the painting come from? That's the fault with the linear theory. It's like, it's like that makes sense, but it's like, where did the painting come from? You know. Also, I like I like this kind of side passage thing, although it's a teleport. Um. Now, of course, the timeline theory is like if I give myself the painting from the past, technically my entire past will change. And therefore, my future self will not exist, which is why you've got several movies where they're like, don't talk to yourself from the future, or something. Uh, you know, and, like, that makes... It fits, but it doesn't exactly make sense, because a lot of things can happen for no reason, or at least... Like, of course, we haven't documented what happens when someone changes the timeline or something. Would anyone notice a timeline change? Probably not. Only the person who goes back in time themselves, which kind of makes sense actually, because then nothing happens and you don't see people time traveling everywhere. But it's just like, you know, like what happens to the old timeline? It stops happening or something? And then you think about the alternate universe theory and whatnot. It's just like, what? There's a guy there. There's two guys there, I think. It's a bit of an odd map, and I'll actually, between breaks, I'll look up what you have to do to do the secret map, because there's two things you need to do in this map in order to trigger the secret map. I think it may involve the cogs, actually, to be honest. Considering I've just grabbed the clock gear, and considering this is an optional map. So, I don't know, we'll look it, I'll look it up. Um, I guess we'll go in this direction, and now we'll end up here. So I guess we're done. That's the entire map. And then everyone respawns. We'll see you guys next time on Hexen. Stop talking about ultimate timeline theories and whatnot. Oh.